Hi everybody, I'm Zach Collins with Scorpion Racing Products and I want to take a little bit of time today to explain how to measure rocker arms, uh, whether they're our rocker arms or a stock rocker arm, to be able to identify it and know what it fits and also what the ratio is. So I have a sample rocker arm here. This is actually one of our Scorpion race series, uh, big block Chevy, 1.7 ratio. Uh, a lot of the calls that we get on the tech line are customers with rocker arms that aren't marked with a ratio, that might be a private label rocker arm, um, and they don't know how to check it. They don't know what it fits, they don't know what they have. Uh, there's a couple quick measurements you can take that will help you identify our specific branded rocker arms as well as other rocker arms in general. And then I'm also gonna walk you through how to check the ratio of a rocker arm if it's not known. Um, so there's a couple standard features on the rocker arms. Um, specifically, our race series and endurance series rockers use different diameter roller wheels on the nose of the rocker arm on the valve side. Uh, so if you have a standard caliper, I just have a standard uh, vernier caliper here, measures zero to six inches in thousandths of an inch. Uh, you can take it and put it right over that roller and you'll see this one is 595 thousandths in diameter. Um, so a 600 thousandths roller is our race series diameter for our rollers. Uh, we also have a 520 thousandths diameter roller and a 477 thousandths diameter roller on our endurance series rockers. Um, so this right here, being that it's closest to 600 thousandths tells me that this is a race series rocker because of the roller that's in it. Now, if you wanna know what stud size or what fastener size it's compatible with, you wanna check the through hole in the trunnion. So you actually just take the caliper and stick it in that through hole and measure it. This one right here measures 435.5. So 437 would be 7 sixteenths. So this through hole is made to fit a 7 sixteenths stud. If it measured three, somewhere around 375, it would be made for a 38 stud. If it measured somewhere around 312 and a half to 316, it would be made for a 5 16 or eight millimeter bolt for a pedestal mount application. Those are really the two quickest dimensions that you can take on a rocker arm to be able to identify what series it is and what fastener size it's gonna fit. In addition to that, you can also measure the overall width of the rocker assembly. Uh, some of our rocker arms we call narrow body and self-aligning. Uh, they actually use a more narrow body, as the name implies, which is not as wide as our standard body width. Uh, those are made specifically for the late model GM center bolt valve covers because our standard body widths won't fit with the center bolts that have to bolt down the valve covers. If you have a perimeter bolt valve cover that you've retrofitted and the head has perimeter bolt holes in it to be able to mount to, you can still use our standard rockers with a center bolt style head as long as you use the perimeter mounts on the valve cover itself. So the way to check that is just check the overall width, which as you can see, the trunnion is the widest part of the rocker body. So I'll check that. This one is 1598, 1.598 inches, which is inch 600. On our narrow body and self-aligning rocker arms, that would be 1.2 or one inch 200 thousandths. And that's how you're gonna know the difference as to whether or not it's compatible with your center bolt valve cover application. Another direct visual indicator without having to take any measurements is the fact that there's snap rings on this trunnion and it sticks out further than the aluminum rocker body. On the narrow body and self-aligning rocker arms, the bearings are gonna be flush with the trunnion with the face of the rocker arm and there's gonna be no snap rings or retaining clips here that you'll see in the assembly at all. Outside of that, as you can see, all of our rocker arms are labeled with a ratio. They're always marked with a ratio and the small number below it is not actually a part number. That's a lot number for traceability purposes. So if there's ever an issue in the field or a customer calls us with that number, we'll be able to tell them when it was manufactured, what material lots it was made from, when it was heat treated, and we'll be able to pull up all the data we need to be able to perform a root cause analysis on a failure or at least identify the part based on that lot number that it was manufactured under. Um, so the ratio here is identified. So for our parts, you'll be able to tell right away what ratio the rocker arm is. Now I'll walk you through the procedure to actually physically check the ratio of the rocker arm on the engine to be able to identify it without having a marking available. So here I have a small block Chevy uh, with two different cylinder heads on it and it actually has some of our shaft mounted rocker arms on it. Um, so the first thing you'll need to do is prepare the engine to be turned over in the normal direction of rotation by hand. So I have an actual socket and ratchet down here that I can turn the engine over easily with because I'm not using checking springs. I have an actual valve spring on here that's gonna duplicate the actual valve spring pressure and deflection as when the engine is actually set up to run. 
Um, so the first thing you'll need besides that is I have a magnetic base dial indicator uh, with one inch of travel. And I have this dial indicator set on the face of the retainer, the top of the retainer. You wanna make sure the axis of the actual travel of the indicator itself is parallel to the valve. You don't want it crooked in relation to the valve because then you're not getting an actual one-to-one -one linear measurement of the distance that it's moving. Um, our retainers here have actually been machined flat, so there's no radiuses or curves on them to give us a false reading that the indicator may slip off of during the travel. Um, so it's actually a flat face. You wanna set the indicator up so that way it still has enough travel left in it to go full lift, max lift, um, without going back to zero or running out of travel available. Um, so the other thing you need to know when you're checking the ratio on the engine, which should be available if it's a new build or you should be able to call your camshaft manufacturer if you don't know, or there's also a physical way to check this, is the lobe lift of your cam. So based on whether you're checking an intake lobe or an exhaust lobe, um, is gonna determine what lobe you need to focus on on your cam card. So for instance, here, I'm checking an intake lobe. So I know that I'm gonna be using the lift from the lobe on the intake side of the camshaft, which I have documented here as 482 thousandths. So we know that the lobe lift is 482 thousandths. Based on what lift we get on our reading in the dial indicator is gonna tell us how far the valve actually opened. And then we can do the math to calculate the ratio. So I'm just gonna roll the engine over in the normal direction of rotation by hand and watch as my indicator travels. Each revolution is 100 thousandths, so there's 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, and then we come up 800, 810, 820, 830, 840, 845-847. So I've got 847 thousandths of valve lift at the valve. So if I do the math, what you need to do is you need to take your valve lift number and divide that by your lobe lift number. So if I take 842 divided by 482, that'll give me the ratio that this actually checked on the engine. So I'll do that right now, 0.842 divided by 0.482, that equals 1.746. So that's a 1.75 rocker. So this rocker, given the deflection that this is a real spring, uh, should be a 175 ratio, 1 1.75. If you're using a checking spring, the rocker ratio is probably gonna check higher than that and a little heavier because the checking spring doesn't have as much pressure as the actual valve spring, so there's not gonna be as much deflection in the system. This actually flexes a little bit as it opens and gets into the higher spring pressures and toward max lift, so you're gonna lose a little bit of lift there. Um, so that tells me this is actually a 1.75 ratio rocker arm. Uh, that's how you can identify the rocker arm and that's how you can take most of the common measurements to identify the rocker arm so you know what you have and what it will fit. If you have any further questions, please visit our website at www.scorpionracingproducts.com or always feel free to call our tech line at 352-512-0800 and we'd be more than happy to help you identify what rocker arms you have. Thank you.